Hi, this is Michael Pöhne from Apex AI, and I will talk about middleware for the software-defined vehicles. I will start with the evolution of the automotive EE architecture that shows the transition from hardware-driven towards software-driven systems. An automotive middleware has to address different layers of communication. We look at the requirements for these layers and how they can be fulfilled by combining open source projects hosted by the Eclipse Foundation. The presented middleware stack is part of the robotic operating system Rust2, which is the most popular open source framework for the development of automated driving. Finally, we'll have a deep dive into zero copy communication, which is a must have when dealing with gigabytes per second data communication on modern robotic and automotive systems. Here, you see the evolution of the automotive EE architecture. EE stands for electrical and electronic and reflects the hardware-oriented view the automotive industry had in the past. Over the last decades, there has been an evolution from electronic control units with one dedicated task to high-performance domain controllers and vehicle computers on which many different software functions are integrated. The communication infrastructure changed from statically configured low bandwidth networks like CAN and LIN to Ethernet backbones. Service-oriented communication is used to realize dynamic connections. The software running on an ECU is no longer only provided by the hardware vendor. We have software stacks with contributions from different suppliers and more and more open source software is included. All this shows the transition from hardware defined to software defined vehicles. Modern ECUs can have multiple system and chips and these so-called SOCs can have multiple CPUs. As shown in the figure, such an SOC is typically a combination of different ARM CPUs. One with hardware lockstep safety cores and one with several high performance cores. It is already possible today to build an automated driving reference stack entirely with open source components. This is also the vision of the SOFI initiative recently announced by ARM. In my further presentation, I will focus on the middleware part of this reference stack. Automotive communication has different layers with different properties. Intra SOC is the communication between software parts within an SOC. Inter-SOC is the communication between SOCs that are on the same ECU. Inter-ECU is the communication between the ECUs in a vehicle. The vehicle can communicate with the cloud backend of the OEM or the fleet operator, or with other vehicles and the infrastructure, which is summarized as V2X. The differences already start with the type of the communication channel. Intra-SOC is an in-memory communication. Between SOCs and ECUs, there's typically a wired connection. And with wireless communication, the vehicles are connected to the infrastructure or cloud backends. Let's have a look at use cases and requirements these layers have. A single SOC can host a functionality like the sense plan act pipeline of Autoware's valid parking we see in this figure. It includes a LiDAR perception, localization, planning, and vehicle control. And it will be used as a reference use case for this presentation. It can be described with a graph whose nodes are software components and whose edges are messages. On today's multi-core CPUs, Several of these nodes can be executed in parallel. Dealing with this concurrency is already the first requirement for the intra-SOC communication layer. One of the challenges is the amount of data that has to be exchanged between the nodes of such a graph. Compared to engine control systems, where we had to transfer data in the range of kilobytes per second, driver systems and automated driving systems have internal data rates of up to several gigabytes per second. And this data exchange must be done with low latency and runtime consumption. This is already a big difference 
when comparing to a smartphone, where the individual apps primarily communicate with a server and not with each other. A graph with highly meshed nodes can best be realized with a published subscribe middleware that supports many-to-many -many communication. Domain controllers and vehicle computers have POSIX-based operating systems like Linux or QNX. The communication middleware has to support the flexibility these operating systems provide. For example, the nodes could run in different executables that can be started individually. As already said, an SOC can have multiple CPUs and also a hypervisor could be used to run different operating systems in parallel on one of these ECUs. The shared memory that the SOC provides to all these operating system instances can be leveraged if a highly efficient connection is needed. The next communication layer I will talk about are inter-SOC and inter-ECU. The SensePlan Act pipeline we had as example could run on an automated driving domain controller. Such a domain controller is often an ECU with several SOCs and microcontrollers. It is connected to other domains and sensory issues of its own domain, like LIDARs, cameras, or radars in our use case. We still have the traditional automotive buses like LIN and CAN, but the most relevant technology to connect SOCs and ECUs is now Ethernet. First class Ethernet support is already the first requirement. In addition to the higher bandwidth, one driver is the need for more flexible service-oriented communication. This is realized with protocols on top of the IP network stack. As many existing ECUs are based on AUDASAR, it is important to support the wire protocols that are part of the AUDASAR specification. Besides some IP, DDS is used there. We'll have a look at these technologies on the next slide. Below the wire protocols, time-sensitive networking would be the standard if latency and bandwidth guarantees are needed within the Ethernet network. But sure, it is not all about Ethernet. Besides the already mentioned legacy buses like CAN, an automotive middleware must also be prepared to send data over links like PCI Express or LVDS. LVDS is, for instance, often used to transfer video streams in a surround view system. Some IP and DDS are must-haves for automotive Ethernet today. DDS, the Data Distribution Service, is an OMG standard that has its origin in mission-critical systems. It is already used in many different domains and is becoming more and more relevant for automotive. Some IP, on the other side, is a protocol that has so far only been used in automotive. It was specified by BMW and then standardized in AutoSAR. Most technologies can be used for publish, subscribe, and client server communication. And they also define how data is serialized and communication endpoints can be discovered. DDS is much more than just a wire protocol, as it also specifies things like APIs in different programming languages and an interface definition language. For some IP, such aspects are only covered when it is used in the context of AutoSAR. Ultimately, the main difference are the QS settings that DDS provides, which allow to define things like caching, filtering, and liveness of messages, whether the communication shall be reliable or best effort, or failover mechanisms. Coming back to our example, the automated driving domain controller is connected to an Ethernet backbone that also includes an ECU, which provides connectivity to the cloud. This can be used for connected validation, where in-vehicle data is collected and used to improve and update the vehicle functions. With software with the updates, it is, for instance, possible to update specific nodes of the SensePlan Act pipeline. The connectivity could also be used for shadow validation the new version of the node is running in parallel to the current active one. 
The outputs of the node are then not used for controlling the car, but are collected and sent for validation to the cloud. This means that a bridging from in-vehicle protocols like some IP or VDS to internet scale protocols is needed. We have to deal with a wireless link that has varying availability and bandwidth. Service-oriented communication is also recommended here for having the needed flexibility to collect the right data at the right time. There are already established IoT protocols like MQTT, AMQP, or Apache Kafka. Which technology is used might also depend on the used cloud infrastructure. Currently, there's a lot of activity in the area of edge computing, and it is very likely that new networking technologies arise, which better support distributed storage and computing. Eclipse Seno is one of the candidates based on promising new ideas coming from named data networking. Okay, checkpoint. Let's see how we can combine open source projects hosted by the Eclipse Foundation to realize an automotive middleware stack that already fulfills most of these requirements. And it is also compatible with the robotic operating system ROS2. ROS2 provides a middleware abstraction layer that was designed with a DDS-based middleware in mind. The current default middleware that is coming with ROS2 is Cyclone DDS. In Cyclone DDS, Eclipse Ice Oryx was integrated as shared memory transport and enables high performance inter process communication. The code bases of both projects have a history of more than 10 years in automotive and mission critical systems. They also support many different operating systems and APIs in different programming languages. With communication bridges, additional protocols can be connected. For instance, an MQTT bridge based on Eclipse PAHO. The bridge to Eclipse Seno can be used to connect to microcontrollers or for edge connectivity. Autosar based systems can be connected with a SUM IP bridge, for instance, based on the open source vSUM IP implementation, which is hosted by the infotainment platform JNEV. With the ROS compatible reference stack, I will now motivate why zero copy communication matters and how it works. The following measurements were done with the latest ROS2 Galactic release and the linked open source performance test tool. The figure on the right hand side shows the latency for inter process communication when the ROS messages are transferred via the loopback interface. For message sizes over 64 kilobytes, the latency is dominated by copies and serialization in the middleware. When it comes to megabyte messages, the communication latency for a single message is already in the range of several milliseconds. A point cloud is typically between five and 10 megabytes and will result in a latency of about five milliseconds. In perception pipelines, like the part of the outerware example, you see on the lower part of the slide, these latencies add up to critical values. Eclipse IceRx can eliminate all these copies and it is possible to have what we call true zero copy communication. How does this work? We start with the upper figure. Each process in a POSIX system has its own virtual address space where all the text, data, heap, and stack segments are located. Other processes do not have access. IceOrix now introduces additional shared memory segments that can be mapped into several processes. So these processes can access the same physical memory. Depending on the configuration, with either read-only or write access. The lower image shows that inside the shared memory, a memory pool is instantiated. This can manage chunks of memory. If a publisher wants to send a message, they first request a memory chunk and then directly write a message into it. Then, just references to the messages are pushed to the queues of all the connected subscribers. 
The subscribers then directly read the message from the shared memory. With the reference counting, Isorix takes care of the liveliness of messages and knows when message chunks um, can be freed again as there is no more reader. Here's what it looks like with the lone sample API that we introduced in Rust 2. It is crucial to already avoid copies on the API level. Therefore, the first step is borrowing a loan message. This allocates a chunk in the memory pool and constructs the message in that chunk, which is finally returned to the user. In step two, the user can write the message members. It will directly change the data in the shared memory. Note here that true zero copy is only possible if all the message data is located in the shared memory. If the message contains data structures that are allocating additional memory on the heap, like an SCD vector, the shared memory can still be used as a communication channel, but copies are necessary to transfer the data from the heap of the sending process to the heap of the receiving process. We are currently working on getting the best possible performance for all kinds of Rust messages. With the publish call in step three, the ownership of the load message is passed with a move to the middleware for sending. In this context, the references to the loaned messages are then pushed to the subscriber queues. The figure now shows a second line for which the same fixed size messages were sent with the loan sample API. Maybe you have to look twice, it is a pretty flat line. As Rust 2 middleware, Cyclone DDS with built in ice oryx was used. True zero copy communication has a fixed latency that is independent of the message size. This is because only the references to the messages are processed by the middleware. The slight increase the line still has is due to the message initialization in the Rust stack, which is the only remaining size dependent factor. Hand in hand with the reduction in latency is a reduction in CPU cycles, as no more cycles are needed to move around bytes in memory. I provided here a link to a virtual Eclipse community meetup in which zero copy communication with ROS2 is described in more detail. Finally, who are we? Epix AI is one of the main contributors to the open source projects Outerware, ROS, Cyclone DDS, and IceOrix. We provide production grade versions of these projects that include additional documentation and tests as well as all the determinism, functional safety, and support you need for automotive grade deployments. Thanks for watching this video, especially thanks to ARM for organizing the Dev Summit conference. I'm looking forward to answering questions you might have. Don't hesitate to get in touch with me. Bye-bye and take care.